Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 10, Lesson 6, Factoring Quadratic Trinomials. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine the factors of trinomials with a leading coefficient of 1, and determine the factors of trinomials with a leading coefficient not equal to 1. Let's learn factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient of 1. So our key concept here is factoring our trinomials with a leading coefficient of 1. For this, before we look at anything else, the leading coefficient of 1 part just means that there's a 1 out front of x squared plus bx plus c you're not going to see that one, so it's really gonna look like there's no number out front. And sometimes these are called simple trinomials. To factor trinomials in this format, you're gonna find two integers with a sum of b and a product of c. And once we know the values that add to b and multiply to c, then we're gonna write our format as x plus one of those integers and then x plus the other one of those integers. So, for example, if we had x squared plus eight x plus 15, I could find two numbers, three and five, they multiply to get to 15 and add together to get eight. So my factors would be x plus 3 and x plus 5. If you cannot figure out any integers that multiply to c and add to b, then that's what we're going to call a prime polynomial, meaning we cannot factor it. Example 1, c is positive. Factor x squared minus 9x plus 18. In this trinomial and in all of them, it's going to be important to identify a, b, and c. So here, b is equal to negative 9, while c is equal to 18. The sign of this last number, so here it's positive 18, that's going to be super helpful to figure out if your integers that multiply to c and add to b, if those are going to be both positive, both negative, or one positive and one negative. So if this last number is positive, that means that both of your signs are going to be the same. Because in order to get a positive number, I have to multiply either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. So no matter what, they have to have the same sign. Then, because b is negative, and these have to be the same, the only way to get a negative number is by using negatives somehow. So b must both be negative. Now, to figure out the puzzle, what multiplies to c but adds to b, one strategy to have is list out all of the factors of that number for c. So we know we're going to need to multiply to c. What things can you multiply to get to 18? 1 and 18, 2 and 9, or 3 and 6. Notice all of them are negative because I had to get a negative number for b. Now, once I figured out the factors to multiply to c, I'm going to figure out which ones add to b. So if I add negative 1 and negative 18, I get negative 19. That's not what we want. Not that one. What about negative 2 and negative 9? I add them and I get negative 11. Not what I want. What about negative 3 and negative 6? That is what I want. So my two factors are negative 3 and negative 6. Now I'm going to just take those two numbers and plug them in. My format x plus the number, x plus the number. So when I do that, I have x plus negative 3 and x plus negative 6. We're going to simplify that down to just showing that it's subtraction instead of adding a negative. So my final factored form would be x minus 3 and x minus 6. In general, if the factors you find are negative, you could just skip right to the step to x minus the number. If the answer would be positive, then you would just put x plus that number. Example two, c is negative and b is positive. In this trinomial, b is equal to five and c is equal to negative 14. So again, this sign right here tells us if they're going to be the same sign in your final product or if they're different. Here it's negative. So the only way to get a negative while multiplying is if one is positive and one is negative. So they must be opposite signs. Then, to figure out which number is positive, which number is negative, we're going to look at the sign that's in front of b. So here, it's a positive 5, which means that whatever factor has a bigger value, that one is going to be positive. If it was a negative out front there, then whatever factor had the bigger value would have been negative. So the process here is then the same. We're going to multiply to negative 14 and add to 5. So factors of negative 14, negative 1 and 14, and negative 2 and 7, those things multiply to negative 14. If I add them together, I get 13 and I get 5. 5 is the one I want, so negative 2 and positive 7 are my correct factors. So I'm plugging those things in. So my format is x plus one of the factors times x plus the other factor. So my two factors are x minus 2 and x plus 7. And this wasn't said in the last example, but it is a good check for you to go through to make sure you have the correct thing. Once you factor stuff out, if you just go through and use the FOIL method and multiply things out, you should end up with what you started with. So x times x is x squared. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x positive 7x, together they would make positive 5, and then negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. So I would multiply it back out to see if I get what I started with. I did here, so I must have done it correctly. Example 3, c is negative and b is negative. In this trinomial, b is negative 3 and c is negative 4. So because that last sign is negative, that means that one of our factors is positive, one of them is negative, they're opposite signs. This time, because the b value is negative, that means the one that has more value is also going to be negative. So completing our table, what factors of negative 4? So completing our table, what can we multiply to get to negative 4? I could do 1 and negative 4, or 2 and negative 2. Adding those together, 
I would end up with negative 3 or 0. So my correct factors here must be 1 and negative 4. Those are what I'm going to plug in, x plus 1 and x minus 4. Example 4, factor a polynomial. Factor x squared minus 4x plus 8, if possible. If the polynomial cannot be factored using integers, write prime. So let's follow our process. We have to multiply to c and add to b. So b is negative 4, c is 8. And since b is negative, that means that when we add the two things together, we get a negative number. And since p is positive, if we multiply the two things together, it's positive. That means m and p both have to be negative, since a negative times a negative would give us our positive. So can we multiply to 8 and add to negative 4? Well, negative 1 times negative 8. So the things that would multiply to 8 would be negative 1 and negative 8, or negative 2 and negative 4. There's nothing else. If we add those together, though, we get negative 9 and negative 6. There's no negative 4 in our choices for sums. So there are no factors with a sum of negative 4, which means we cannot factor this using integers. So this is not factorable. We would say that this is prime. Or sometimes you might see an answer choice that says unfactorable or cannot solve by factoring. Check your understanding. Factor each polynomial. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First one, we get x plus 6 and x plus 1. Second, we get x minus 6 and x minus 2. And the third one, we get x plus 8 and x minus 5. Let's go through one of these just to remind ourselves what we're doing. So we're multiplying. I'm going to just say multiply to 6, but add to 7. So what things multiply to 6? 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. If we add them together, I get 7 and I get 5. So 1 and 6 must be my correct values. Here they had to multiply to 12, but add to negative 8. My only way to do that is with negative 6 and negative 2. And the last one, they had to multiply to negative 40, but add to 3. The only way to do that is with positive 8 and negative 5. And one other quick thing, it doesn't matter what order you put things in. So if you wanted to put, say, x minus 2 and x minus 6, and you have the two things switched around, that doesn't matter as long as you have the correct binomials within the parentheses. Let's learn. Factoring trinomials. Our key concept is factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient that is not equal to 1. And these, when the leading coefficient is not equal to 1, there's going to be a number out front that is used for a. For these, it's a little bit more complicated, but it ends up being just a combination of a couple things we've already learned. So, 1, instead of just doing multiply to c and add to b, this time we're going to multiply to a and c, so a times c together, and still add to b. Then, once we know what those factors are that multiply to ac and add to b, we're going to use grouping, which we learned about in the last lesson, to factor with the GCF of each part. Example 6, c is negative. So factor 4x squared plus 18x minus 10. So here we can see a is not 1, which means we can't just use our simple process that we did in the first few examples of multiply to c and add to b. But in this one, if you notice, everything can be divided by 2. And if you can factor out a number for the GCF or even a number in a variable to begin with, do that. It's going to make your numbers a little bit easier to work with. So here we can factor out a 2, and I'd be left with this trinomial. 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. I still have a leading coefficient that's not equal to 1, so I'm still going to have to follow our new process here. So let's identify a is equal to 2, b is equal to 9, and c is negative 5. If a is not equal to 1, our first step is going to be to multiply a times c, so we can figure out what our factors need to multiply to. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. They're going to need to multiply to negative 10, but add to 9. So let's make a list of negative 10. So for negative 10, I could have 1 and negative 10, 2 and negative 5, 5 and negative 2, 10 and negative 1. I know that I want a positive sum, which means it's probably not going to be these top two because my negative value is more. If we were to add them out, I get negative 9, which I can see right away is not what I wanted. I wanted positive 9. Then I end up with negative 3, positive 3, and finally a positive 9. So the positive 9 is the one I want. So my factor are 10 and negative 1. So those are my numbers that multiplied to get a and c, but add to b. Now that I know that my factors were 10 and negative 1, what I'm going to end up doing is taking this middle term and splitting it apart. Now here it wasn't 18. Remember when we divided it by 2, we got 9x. What I'm going to do is take that 9x and split it into the 10 and the negative 1. So I have 10x and I have negative 1x. By doing this, I am making my polynomial into four terms, which means I can use grouping. If you remember, having at least four terms was one of our conditions to use grouping. Now I can group things that are alike together. So I have the 2x squared plus 10x together and then negative 1x minus 5. Now I can pull out the GCF. So in this first one, I can take out a 2 and I can take out an x. In this one, I can't take out anything, but I'm going to want to take out a negative 1 
That way I end up with the same thing in my parentheses. Now we can see x plus 5 is our greatest common factor, so I'm going to regroup things together, and I end up with x plus 5, and then my two things outside. There's a hidden one here, so 2x minus 1, and then because I divided by 2 at the very beginning, I need to remember to put the 2 out front. So this will be my final factored form. Example 7, c is positive. So let's factor 2x squared minus 17x plus 21. Here a is 2, b is negative 17, c is 21. I need to find the factors that multiply to get 2 times 21, so 42, and add to negative 17. So my factors of 42, negative 1 and negative 42, negative 2 and negative 21, negative 3 and negative 14, and negative 6 and negative 7. The reason I'm just doing the negative values, based on my signs here, I know they have to be the same to get a positive value, and my b value is negative, so they must both be negative. So if I add everything together, which one's going to give me negative 17? negative 3 and negative 14. So my correct factors are negative 3 and negative 14. Now that I know that they're negative 3 and negative 14, I'm going to split my negative 17 into negative 14 and negative 3. It doesn't really matter if I would have put this as negative 3 and this as negative 14, I'd still get the same answer, but I want to put things that are easier to group together. So because 2 and negative 3 don't really go much together, I'm going to put the 14 with the 2. Then I can at least take out a 2 and make my number small. So GCF of 2x squared minus 14x is 2x. And then my greatest common factor of negative 3x plus 21 is negative 3. Because that first thing's negative, I want to take out the negative. Then I'm going to regroup. So x minus 7 was my GCF. And 2x and plus negative 3, we would just write as minus 3. So 2x minus 3. For this one, I also want to show you how you could use the box method to factor. In lesson 4 of this module, I showed you how to use the box method to multiply. So here, we know we're trying to go backward into a 2 by 2. What I'm going to do is put my a value here, my c value here, and then the first parts of the steps are the same. So I know that I have to find the two values that multiplied to a and c but add to b. We figured out here they were negative 14 and negative 3, and those are our x terms. It doesn't matter which box, so we're going to do this. So I'm just going to put them here. And then to factor, we're undoing multiplication. So I'm going to just take the GCF of every direction going left and going up. So the GCF of the top, 2x squared minus 14x, I can pull out a 2 and I can pull out an x. The GCF of negative 3x and 21, if the first thing's negative, you got to pull out a negative, so 2x minus 3. Hey, look, that's what we got here. If I go up, 2 and 3 don't have anything in common, but I can take out an x. Negative 14 and positive 21, I can take out a negative 7. And because that top one's negative, I have to take out the negative. If I were to multiply it back out, I should end up with what I got, but going backwards helped produce my factors on the sides. So that's another way that you can do this. Instead of grouping, either way works. Choose which one is going to work the best for you. Real quick, before the end of this lesson, I do want to show you how you can use Desmos to help figure out what your factors are. This will work for if the leading coefficient is equal to 1, or if it's not equal to 1, help you find those values faster. So in this last example, I have a equals 2, b is negative 17, c equals 21. And because the leading coefficient was not 1, I just typed in ac, and I got 42. Now, you don't need to actually do this. I'm just using it here as a reference so we can kind of remember what things are equal to. For all of these, I want the two numbers, so let's say x and y, that add together to equal b, and I want those same two numbers to multiply to get a and c. So if I type in these things, and in fact, if I type it like this, I don't even need that a times c part. It gives me this cool looking graph here. If I click where they intersect, because really all I did here was create a system of equations, if I click where they intersect, it gives me the two numbers that added to get to B and multiplied to get to A and C. So here it was negative 14 and negative 3. The other point is the same two numbers just switched around. So if you type in your values, know that x plus y equals B, x times y equals AC. It can help you find you things real quick. I changed B here to 16. If you get numbers that don't come out perfectly, they are not integers, that's a way you can tell that it is not factorable or it is prime. If you don't want to type in the a, b, and c part, you can just always just type in your two numbers add to get to the negative 17 part, your two numbers multiply to get to 42, and you'll get your values that you want. This last way is the way I would do it. Eventually, it will save you some time, but adding in the a, b, and c part might help you keep track of your numbers. So there's a quick Desmos tip for you. Use it if you need to.